Hey, listen, I was on the fence as well. I cannot do this. I cannot do this to this team. I cannot. It'll be a disservice to the NBA world, to the history of the NBA, to have this team not be represented properly. And I'm not going to be the one. Welcome back to another episode of The Goat Debate brought to you by Goat Debate Media. I am your host, Abaya Israel, with the two best hosts. You see, the two best co-hosts and two best coaches on all of YouTube, Coach Scott and Coach J.O. We got a banging show for you. We're going to get right into it right after this. Even though I killed the ghost, it's still room to debate. It's either Jordan or LeBron who being labeled the great. If you hungry for the smoke, then come and get you a plate. Because some rock with LBJ and some giving them hate. Come hey, tune into the show because we about to get into it. Jordan is the goat. But now it's time to prove it. All right, we back. And tonight is a goat debate. You know, the GOAT debate. And we got a good one for you. You see him. You see it already. He's shining up the championship <laughs> belt. For... Ali. Boom, by ye. Ali. <laughs> Boom, by ye. Two with a row. Now, how this thing going to work tonight is like this. As y'all see, Coach Scott is the the GOAT debate champion. Um, he's been the, the GOAT debate champion for the last two GOAT debates. And how it works is tonight we're going to debate on the greatest team in NBA history, okay? The link is going to be in the description and also pinned in the comment section. So you can click the link and you can also vote on who is the greatest team. We have the NBA brackets of all the teams. Let me not say all. Let me not say all. Because somebody's going to get mad. And you can't yeah. please everybody. They're going to be like, you left yeah. certain teams off. But what we do have is a good number of, of the greatest teams in NBA history. And we want you guys to go and vote, participate. The coaches, their job is going to be to convince y'all who to vote for. So you already probably have your understanding of who you think the greatest team is. But the coaches are here to persuade using a few different tactics. One of them is we're going to look at team chemistry. All right. We're going to look at the performance of these teams in the regular season and also in the playoffs. We're also going to look at how many championships did these teams win and how effective were they on the offensive and the defensive side of the floor? The coach is going to be touching on that. And when they start um, going through who they think uh, is the greatest team, we're going to go by game by game. Again, there's a bracket that is set up just like the NCAA tournament bracket. It's an entire bracket. When you guys vote, it's going to show you the percentage, the percentage of votes that a particular team is getting. The team with the most votes will move to the next round. And we're going to do the same process every week until we get to the championship round, until we name the GOAT debates all-time greatest NBA team in NBA history. All right? Now, they may agree on some teams. They may not. How that belt that Coach Scott is holding up, what was holding over there, how that belt is going to change hands or not change hands is the amount of teams that they disagree on. If Coach Scott, if we look at the polls and you guys have voted uh, for more teams that Coach Scott has persuaded you guys to vote for, he is the champion he, uh, once again. Or if Coach J.O. can say, hey, these are the greatest teams and the teams that he told you to vote for, and we see you guys voted for more of the teams that he uh, debated for, yeah. then he becomes the new champion. And next week, he will hoist the belt as the GOAT debate champion. But that's, right. that's how it's going to go. Listen, guys, man, I'm ready to get into this. Um, we finna start with the first game on the bracket. We're just going to jump right into right. it. So the first game on the bracket is, and I think I'm going to hear some fuss about this. I, I just, I don't know. The number one seed, all right, is the 1996 Chicago Bulls, the 72 and 10 win Bulls versus the 16 seed, the 1983 Philadelphia it's 76ers. And know what? I'm just going to start with Coach J, yo. I got to get a temperature meter gauge just to go over his head. I don't know. Go ahead, Coach. What you got? Check this out. <clears throat> All right? We checking. Now, yeah. <laughs> 16 Z. <clears throat> Let's just put that out there, right? There's no list, no bracket, where the 83-76 would be a 16 C. Okay. But with that being said, I'm going to let that slide, okay? Now, I understand that we love the 72 and 10 Bulls. I get it. Michael Jordan, I get it. But let me ask you all the question. Would you all love 
those Bulls teams, that particular Bulls team, if Michael Jordan wasn't there, if they had not just replacing right? with anybody, replace him with the second best player in the league at that time, whoever you may say it was. Okay, Shaq, Hakeem Olajuwon, Clyde Drexler, whoever you may say, you wouldn't love that team. Okay, but think about this: the nineteen eighty three. 76, 70, I mean, 65 and 17 win team. Moses Malone, four All-Stars on that team, that particular year. Moses Malone, Dr. J, all right? Um, Mo Cheeks, Andrew Tone. They had three 20-point-per-game scores. Three. True. Who that sound like? Oh, that sound like the team that they say is the greatest team ever, the Golden State Warriors. That's what that sound like. They not only had two uh, NBA first team players in Dr. J and Moses Malone, they had two all NBA defensive first team players in Mo Cheeks and Bobby Jones. You know, you know what also they had? The sixth man of the year, Bobby Jones, a five time all star and 11 time all defensive player coming off the bench. So, what right. you're saying, Coach Shale, is they were stacked. They were loaded. Okay? Uh, uh, they were. I you get go them. from number two to number three to number four to mm-hmm. number five on the Bulls compared to the 76ers. It's literally no comparison. There's nobody on the Bulls team that's better than the second best player on the uh, 76ers team. All right, so let me ask you this then. All right, so you run, you, you're run. you going with the, the 83 76ers. Is that, is that correct? I no choice right now, right? Listen, I get it. I get it. Everybody, we got this infatuation with Jordan. We got this infatuation with the Bulls. I get it. I <laughs> Hey, listen, I was on the fence as well. I cannot do this. I cannot do this to this team. I cannot. It'll be a disservice to the NBA world, to the history of the NBA, to have this team not be represented properly. And I'm not going to be the one. I'm not going to be the so one. Let me ask you a question. Let me, let me ask you a question. They okay. play right now. 72 and 10 Bulls, 96, the 1996 Bulls versus the 1983 76ers. Who wins that game? Easy. All right, I'm going to tell you why. Who? Right, again, as I, I'm going to tell you, as, as I always say, the path of most resistance. The path of most resistance. Okay? You know who they beat in the finals? Boy, you ain't answering my question. I'm about to tell you. Okay. I'm about to tell you. I'm going to tell you why. You know who they beat in the finals? Oh, uh, the, the, the almighty Showtime Lakers, baby. Showtime Lakers. They beat them. And not only did they beat them, they swept them. Swept them. Swept, sweep, sweep. Get the broom. You sweep. Okay? Boy, come get this broom and sweep up this kitchen. That's what they did. Okay? Moses Malone. That's literally. You can call Rodman all you want to. There's literally no answer for Moses Malone. No answer. Bulls had no answer whatsoever. Okay? Now, you might say they had no answer for Michael Jordan. They literally had two all-defensive player, first-team players. Two. Okay? Okay. Okay. I got you. I got you. You you do understand that the, the 1996 Bulls was the number three defense in the league, right? Doesn't matter. You know why? It, it it doesn't I, matter. You know what? You're talking you, four you Hall of Famers to two. What are you talking about? So wait, so wait, it, Coach Scott. Coach Scott, who are you going with? So it could be clear. Well, hey, listen, I'm going with the '96 Bulls. It's it's clean on the paper, man. It's okay, 1996 Bulls for Coach Scott and the '83 76 is for Coach Jay. But go ahead, Coach Scott, you got it. No, man, it's four Hall of Famers on this thing. They got the number one scoring offense. They had the number one scoring leader in the league at the time. They had the the Dennis Rodman was the number one rebounder in the league at the time. I mean, you got Batman and Robin going at it. Rebounds are coming off the board. You you had 105 points per game. It, come on, come on now. I I, I hate. And, and, and I'm going to be honest with you. I hate that the 1983 76ers had to be paired up with these 1996 Bulls. I hate it. I hate it. But listen, bro, you got to stop it. You you got to stop it. Hey, listen, hold on. Do you realize they had a you gotta five-time stop hold on, hold on. Do you realize they had a five-time all-star coming off the bench as the sixth man of the year? 
a fi- you remember you remember a couple weeks ago you was telling me oh LeBron James and how his defensive accolades match up with the greatest ever. Bobby Jones is an eleven time all defensive selection player. Eleven. He coming off the bench. Coming off the bench because he can't score no points. <laughs> Okay. So Rob McCann. Because he can't score no points. So he just Rob disrespectful McCann, so for no reason. <laughs> let me let me ask you, let me ask you this both both. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. We got inside and we got out. Do the Bulls have an inside out game? They got Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen. No, what are no, you no, talking no, no. about? They have Michael Jordan. They have Michael Jordan. Point blank period. They have Michael Jordan. That's you it. Do, you do realize Tony Kukoc was on this team as well. I don't right? care that Tony Kukoc is on. <laughs> Do you realize oh, you're no, just saying down. stuff? Slow down, Man, slow stop down. just saying stuff. Slow down. Now. The, no, I'm not. The 76ers had three 20 point per game score. Well, somebody might say, well, uh, Tony wasn't a uh, 20 point per game, 19.7 to 20 points per game. Point, point blame period. Okay. Two, two. I mean, three. I'm sorry. Three. They had four all stars. Four. What team that reminds you of? How many teams cool. you know have four all stars? Well, the same well, well, let me ask you this question, Coach L. Speaking of that team, the other team, that mysterious team you keep referring to with four All-Stars, if it was that team versus the 96 Bulls, who do you think he'd win? Just a quick, quick, quick crap. We ain't got to go into details. That other team? You think the other team would win? No, no, no. I'm asking. That other team. You think I'm the other asking, team would beat this? No, I'm asking. Are you referring to that other team? Yeah. Versus the 96 what Bulls. What other team? You think the other team would win? No, I'm asking you. What other team? The 96 Bulls and uh, the Warriors you keep talking about. The Bulls will win. Okay. So then how is it any different for the 86 or the 83 76ers? Now, this same Bulls team, and, and I'm going to let you talk to Coach Scott, but this same Bulls team, as Coach Scott just pointed out. But they had, remember, these guys had wingspans, like eagles. Like these dudes were long from the point guard all the way to the center. They had a defensive squad. So you may have three 20-point scores, but you got defenders who would get with that three, those three 20-point scores as well. But I, I, I rest my case. Not, I just want to throw that in there. Hold on. This, it's this it's two you guys. Go y'all y'all got to stop it. We got to stop doing this. Do you realize what they did to the Lakers? Yeah. They swept Magic. They swept the, the show. Like, they swept did. them. They swept the Showtime Lakers. Great. But listen. You – when really, you, we sneezing at that? We sneeze. Oh, great. We, we're, we're not sneezing at it, but they, they, that's what they did. That's what they had to do to win the champ. They swept the Showtime Lakers. But when you're talking about the 1996 Bulls, you're talking about Michael Jordan, arguably the greatest team again. This is why we're here talking about the greatest teams of all time. And this team right here had it all. They had offense, they had defense, they had sharpshooters, they had Ron Harper, they had Steve Kerr, they had it inside and they had it out, they had rebounding, they had it all. This team was stacked to the gills. Let's let's just let's, let's just call it what it is, coach. Hold on, hold on, hold on. The hold on, 1996 hold on, hold on. Bulls. Come on now. Listen, hold on. Usually, usually when when two teams are this close uh matchup or as good as each other or right neck and neck. Right. How I break that tie is I usually go with the whoever team got the best player, right? That's what I usually do. But this is this is this is something that got to be understood. I really don't think people understand how good Moses Malone was. I get it. I get it. No HDTV. I get it. All right. I get it. It wasn't. It didn't exist. Right. So I understand people may not know how good Moses Malone was, right? I can say this. Moses Malone had just as much impact on his team than Michael Jordan had on his team. Just as much. Just as much. He was that impactful. Coach, let me ask you this. realize this. They literally played the same Lakers team the year before without Moses Malone. I got you. And you get Moses Malone... And you sweep the team. Let me ask you this. Sweep them. Let me ask you this. Prior to the day, <laughs> prior to this, this this GOAT debate, you had a Sega Genesis or a Nintendo. Let me ask you that. Both. Yeah, both. Have you ever played with the 1983 76ers 
on your Sega Genesis? They went up there. Yeah, they were. On Sega? On Sega Genesis, yeah. I guess. I know they never, on 2K. You never, you never played with them, and you didn't even know they existed because you played with the Bulls. That's why. No, see, 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 this, this, this is the thing, right? Y'all call, and, and this, you say the Bulls, but you really want to say MJ. That's what you really want to say. You want to say MJ. That's literally what you want to say. Because if MJ didn't exist, you wouldn't talk about this team like that. And you can literally go get the second best player in the NBA at that time, put them on the Bulls, and they don't, they don't get close. Well, well, they don't get close. Well, here's the thing. Here's the thing. MJ does exist. <laughs> <laughs> he did this, and so that's why we talk about it. Let's close out. We're going to go to the next game. So, again, Coach J.O., 30 seconds. Hey, 30 seconds. Hold on. 30 seconds. Why the 83-76ers? Uh, Scott, 30 seconds. Why the 72-10 and 10 Bulls or the 96 Bulls? Coach oh, Scott. It's very simple. Very simple. Four Hall of Famers. Two players. Two players in the top 25 of all time. You got an all-time great in Dennis Rodman as rebounder, and you got sharpshooters all over the place. Steve Steve Kerr, Ron Harper, there's no way that the 83 76ers is stopping this squad. Next bracket. Next bracket. I just, Coach J.O. I, I, I just said it. Four All-Stars, all right, two Hall of Famers, and you said two players in the top 25 from the Bulls. That's not true. Actually, the 76ers had two players in the top 25 ever. Dr. J. and Moses Malone. Okay. They had two all NBA players and two all defense players, and they had a, a a six man of the year coming off the bench. Listen, the team was stacked, the team was loaded, and it's unfair. They they got to be matched up with the Bulls. People want to be biased towards Michael Jordan. I get it. Whatever. All right. All right. So if you're watching, there you have it, man. When the polls, when you get to the polls, depending on who you vote for, it's going to count towards that belt if it goes to Coach Scott or if it goes to <clears throat> Coach J.O. Next game. 2014 San Antonio Spurs. The 2014 San Antonio Spurs. This is the team that mollywopped, dominated, drowned, embarrassed, and suplexed the 2013-14 Miami Heat, right? Um, so, uh, let's let's be honest. They set all type of records. So for y'all who say, why, why the Heat ain't on here? Well, this is ridiculous. that kind of went towards that equation. A lot of these teams may have lost before, but that was pretty bad. Um, same, same so, team that hold on, hold on. Two thousand, hold on. Two thousand fourteen San Antonio Spurs against the nineteen eighty seven Los Angeles Lakers. I started with Coach J.O. last time. I'm gonna start with you, Coach Scott. I know you are you you that Miami Heat team. You know he's. I know he got probably got some smoke he want to get off right now. So I'm gonna let him go ahead and start it. You got it. Hey, I'm just gonna represent for the home. Look, the 2013 Miami Heat, they need to be, they need to be spoke about number five in offense, number five in defense, uh, 66 wins, 28 straight wins. That team needs to be spoken about. Four wins over the win-loss ratio. I'm just saying. Uh, I got the 1987 Lakers all day. We mashed the 2014 Spurs because of length. You lo- you're talking about Magic Johnson at 6'9". You're talking about Kareem at 7'2". You're talking about James Worthy at 6'9". You're talking about Michael Cooper at 6'7". Uh, all-time great A.C. Green at 6'9". You're talking about Byron Scott at 6'3". You got length all over the court. This is the Showtime Lakers that ran the court against everybody. And top to bottom, they're just the greatest, one of the greatest teams to ever play ba- the game of basketball. They period. didn't run the court against the 83-76ers. This is 87 Lakers. <laughs> this is not. This, I got you. <laughs> this is not 83. Before we pull it. <laughs> <laughs> it's still. It, we're talking about the Showtime Lakers, but I just got a question. Um, you said they molly this 2014 San Antonio Spurs. Absolutely. Do they, they molly Do they molly that Miami Heat team with LeBron, D Wade, and uh, Bosch? Hey, if they put that, if you put that team in the bracket, then we could talk about it. But I'm talking about this team right no, here. No, no, uh, this is a question live. <laughs> about this viewers, right here, viewers, they, make sure we keep him guys. honest. He, know, hey, I think he see where I'm going with this right now. I got him in the corner. <laughs> do they mollywop the two that that, that 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 Miami Heat team? Do they do they mollywop them? No, because that type of basketball is how Miami played. They played fast. They played. They played up and down the court. They, do they, they beat them? They were they were rebound. They were rebounding and throwing the ball down the court. They they were fun and gun. 
this would have been a really good game to watch if they played they Miami. Beat if this them. was a bracket game, this would have been an excellent game to watch. It would have been fast. They... It... Coach JL, he don't want to ask the question. He trying to it, reference listen, the question. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to tell you. It okay. would have been a great game to watch. It would have been a phenomenal game to watch. But I also I, I gotta go with I gotta go with the king. I'm I'm going I'm going with Miami in in in, in 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 a game in a game seven. I'm going with Miami. So Coach JL, the 2014 Spurs who destroyed that Miami Heat team, who was actually destroyed. beat pretty bad for the second time in that four-year run, which is probably why they're not on the list. Not so any, not any biasness. Hold on, not, not being biased, but they did kind of only go like, what, two and two and out of four, and they kind of, you know, got beat one, both times embarrassingly. But the 2014 Spurs, who would who destroyed that Heat team, but would lose to the Lakers, the 87 Lakers, but the Lakers would lose to the Heat. Make it make sense, Coach Jill. You got it. All right. It makes no sense, right? No <laughs> team, no team that didn't win the championship deserved to be up here, right? You know uh what that 2013-14 Miami Heat team is known for? You know, you know they number one in something. What's that? The that largest, anything? the largest, largest point differential in NBA history. That's true. That is true. In NBA history. Okay. They lost. And they lost bad. All right, but wait, want Coach J.O., I'm sorry. Can you say that again for all of the comments that we may get that we're just hating LeBron and LeBron's team? That is not the case. These are facts. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. These are facts. The largest <laughs> point differential in NBA Finals history. Okay? Listen. I'm, that's a record. Listen. Oh, listen. it's my turn. My turn. My turn. My turn. You know what? You're right. You're right. Oh, You're right. You're right. Okay. Now. What people don't understand about those Lakers teams and about Kareem, right? People th- think about Kareem as this uh, unstoppable score, but people don't know he's a multiple-time all-defensive player. So think about this, right? Think about this. He could guard Tim Duncan, but you know who he couldn't guard? He couldn't guard Moses Malone. Let's just throw that back out there. He couldn't guard Moses Malone. He couldn't. He got destroyed. <laughs> so back today, he couldn't guard Moses Malone. He couldn't do it. All right. So it is what it is. <laughs> All right. Anyway, but you had somebody to match up with Timmy. The reason why this 2014 team, uh, Spurs team wouldn't do it. If you were telling me this was a prime Tim Duncan, you know, a 2004, 2003 Tim Duncan, maybe. This was the latter end Tim Duncan. And even though this was the latter end Kareem, it, he needed more. The Spurs just needed more. You know what I'm saying? They needed more scoring to be able to beat them. You get what I'm saying? Because this Lakers team was going to score. They were going to score, 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 score. And and the uh, Spurs couldn't do nothing about it. It's well, just too much firepower. Well, let me ask you this, because these firepower. debates are based on offensive and defensive uh, sides of the court. Also on championships, on team chemistry, right? And also on the regular season and playoff runs. Based on those things alone, when you look at the 87 Lakers, their champ, their their regular season, and then their playoffs, their scoring and their defense, and the championship in- included. When you compare that to the 2014 uh, San Antonio Spurs, who was the better team? Easy. This team was number two in scoring, 117 points per game. 117 points per game. Like, like, how are you going to deal with that? Actually, yeah. Like how? Like, like tell me how you're going to deal with that. Hmm? You got 6'9", Magic Johnson running down the court. You got Byron Scott. You got James Worthy. Finals MVP, right? Finals MVP, James Worthy with Kareem. It's too much firepower. Like, it, it, it's nothing to say. It's too much firepower. What you going to tell me? Tiago Splitter was going to stop Kareem or something? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> like, Scott, ooh. You don't think the fundamentals of the Spurs, who were very fundamentally sound, if you ask me, that's how they beat that Miami Heat team so soundly and other teams because of their fundamentals. I'm a, I'm a firm believer that fundamentals beats athleticism any day you could jump out the gym you could dunk it you could shoot for three from half court all you want but when i'm doing the proper chest pass and we cutting the slash and i can shoot properly and we are playing together as a team that's why we can look at even in any sport 2007 patriots yeah you got tom brady but you know 
that was a team sport because they were fundamentally sound. They played together as a team. That's what I see in the 2014 Spurs. You don't think that would have been enough to overcome the seven, uh, 87 Lakers? It was. I mean, you make a great point. I think looking at what that Spurs team was and looking at how how similar the Heat team and the Lakers team was, yeah, they would have tried to slow it down, but the Lakers just had too much length. That's the part that they couldn't come overcome. That slowing the game down would have been fine, and and making the 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 speed of the game kind of change, the pace of the game change, great. But when you got into the half court, you're now dealing with six nine seven two six nine six seven. It's just too much length on the court. I can see that. What do you do? And, and, and think about that. this: if I'm not, I mean, Tony Parker was the leading scorer on that team throughout throughout that season. Okay. Like, look at who they was going to throw on him. You're talking about Michael Cooper. You're talking about Byron Scott. You're talking about Magic Johnson. Like, how? What he was, what, what, like, what could he do? What could he do? Like, where was the scoring going to come from? That's the thing. And even though that team was, was a fundamental team and they did play team ball, but in the playoffs, yeah. you got to have that guy. You got to have that guy that you can be able to give the ball to and say, go get me a bucket. You got to have that. Timmy was past his prime. He couldn't do it. Why was a baby? Okay. Mm -hmm. So you were lying on 6'2, 6'3, Tony Parker to go in the lane while Kareem down there and you getting checked by Michael Cooper, Byron Scott, Magic Johnson. No, sir. All right. Hey, listen, that's that's the end of this one. Um, Those are great points. And actually, I was I thought they were a little off with this one. But, you know, as those are great points, I might say, you know, maybe they will have 2014 Spurs would have some trouble with the 87 Lakers with those points being brought up. Guys, make sure you go and vote. I should have said this earlier, but you can only vote once. So make sure you make it count. Right. You can only vote once. Hit the hit the link in the description section or the one that's pinned down in the comment section. Okay. Next game, the 2017 Golden State Warriors versus, and this is the number three seed, the number three seed at 2017 Golden State Warriors versus the 14 seed, 1971 Milwaukee Bucks. Who wins? Go say up. Oh, okay. This is rhetorical. Huh? I said this is rhetorical. It's a rhetorical question. <laughs> I thought you were like, what's going on? No, 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 no. Seriously. <laughs> like, seriously. Seriously. This is not a fair matchup. It's not. It's, it's, it's literally not. Now, am I one of those guys who believes that, oh, the Golden State Warriors, they'll run through anybody? And no, 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 no. I'm not one of those guys. But the 71 bucks, hell yeah, they would. Hell yeah. Okay. Stephen Curry. Clay Thompson, Kevin Durant. Literally, there's no matchup. Like, there's no, like, how are you going to match that? The Bucs didn't have that. Okay, Oscar Robinson, uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. And we're talking about prime, prime, prime Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Cool. Cool. Okay. Now, let's not get this twisted. I know people want to, who the hell is Zaza Pachulia, Right? I get it. That's what people will say when I call his name out, right? But when you're talking about a big, rugged body like that, who would rough Kareem up? And when, I'm not saying Kareem wouldn't eat on him. I'm not saying Kareem wouldn't get 35 a night on him. But it wouldn't be the 35 a night that would lead a team to a playoff uh, victory or a playoff series victory. It wouldn't. Zaza Pachulia, that body, that girth, to me, would be able to rough up Kareem. Not only that, JaVale McGee, that type of length coming out the bench as well, that's tough, okay? That's tough. You got somebody to match up with uh, Kareem. Now, again, who do you have to match up with Stephen Curry, Kevin Durant, Clay Thompson? Who? All right. Well, Coach Scott. Not only – Go ahead. ahead. I thought thought you was ending it right there. You got – go ahead. You got a couple more seconds. Okay. Who, no. who do you have to match up with that? Not only that, people might say, well, we got Oscar Robertson. Okay, cool. I got Andre Iguodala. All right? One of the best defenders of this era. One of the best. 
He doesn't get a lot of credit for what he does, but one of the best defenders of this era. I can agree with this that. This is not even a fair comparison. You're talking about, like, come on, one of the best playoff records in NBA history only lost one game. One game. Only lost one game. Come on. This I can agree with fair. that. Coach Scott. Coach Scott. Um, help us understand. All right. I, the 71 bucks, beautiful. So if I understand correctly, you think the 71 bucks would beat this 2017 Warriors team. Is that correct or incorrect? No, I I, I was actually um I was I was I was mistaken. Look, they they these guys, they put up a game, they put up a great game. They put up a, a very formidable game, but you know, you you got to look at this 71 bucks team. They didn't even have three point. They didn't have three pointers back then. You know, the, the three point the three point line was instituted in 79 and 80. So the the way that these guys would have played would would have been foreign to the to the seventy to the to the nineteen seventy one Bucks. I mean, just being honest. That is but when point. you do look at Kareem and when you do look at the Big O, I mean, let's let's be honest. Who's going to stop a man who's shooting forty nine percent from the field? Are you saying Andre Iguodala is going to stop him from shooting 49% from the field? He's 26, 8, and 10. So what, what is he really going to do with the big O? I mean, Kareem, like you said, in a prime, you're going to stop him from scoring 35 a game? Is that what's really going to happen? I think this is a 1971 Bucks team that is just, you know, they put in a bad bracket right now. But, you know, when you look at John John McLeod, I mean, you, you really don't have any shooters because – that was a foreign thing to them. They, 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 you, you don't have anybody that can kind of keep the game close because if you're trading threes for twos, you're going to get blown out of the gym. I can agree with that. Um, I do think it goes by what rules you're playing with as well and what area rules matter. you're playing. But hold on real quick. It's the second time I've heard it. They said, bad bracket. Let's make something clear. If you're the best team, you're the best team. If you're number one and you're number two, uh, 16, it doesn't matter where you place. You're the best team. Now, if you're saying, well, the Bulls are against the 83, uh, 76 in the first round, it, it don't matter. The best team should actually win. The only thing the bracket will, will, will do is set up the matchup for later. That's it. That's the only thing the bracket is really doing. If you're the best team, you should be everybody on here. If you can't be everybody on here, then guess what? You're not the best team, which is the point of the bracket. So this is not a traditional bracket. And I'm telling, I'm, I'm explaining this for the viewers because the coach is mad at me because of the bracket, y'all. They had nothing to do with the bracket. Let me clear it. They had nothing to do with the bracket. Go ahead, Coach J.O. <laughs> hey, it, it, no, it, it, it was on matter. me. It, it was on me. You're not taking my mic. You're not taking my mic. It was on me. It was on me. I'm not taking my mic. <laughs> Go ahead, Coach Scott. But, but again, when we look at the totality of what these guys did, hey, look, this, the 1971 Bucks, they only lost two games. So you're you're not talking about a a, a a real big game differential, you know. It's it's not a huge game differential. It's not one of those things where you're looking at, you know, oh they they lost five games or they lost four games. They only lost one more game. They went twelve and two in the playoffs, right? Team chemistry, they get major points for it. Look, they beat a LA Laker team with Elgin Baylor and Jerry West. They beat a Bullets team that was led by Earl Monroe, Gus Johnson. So these guys actually took the hardest path of resistance, like you like to say, Coach J.O. So, you know, as you as you want to kind of put this team in, 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 in the in the in the coffin, you got to get you got to put some respect on these guys name, even Coach though they never had a, a, a little bit, of, a little bit of history. And I think that's good for the viewers, too, who may not know all of the history and in, in the path or if they took the path of least resistance or the path of the most resistance going the way to their championship or in their playoff run. But. That's actually pretty good. Uh, I didn't think about that, Coach Scott, that about the three-point if the Warriors had to play in their time. I know it's based on that, but just thinking about if if Curry don't know what that three-point, is he going to just launch it? Well, maybe. You can launch it from half court. It's still two. <laughs> you know? So, but go ahead, Coach Dale. This is the thing, right? See, people want to confuse the Warriors, right, as as this team that's just chunking up three, chunking up, chunking up, chunking up, chunking up, chunking up, right? Everybody. But that here they did. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Everybody wasn't doing that. Steph was doing it. Clay was Clay, doing it. Clay was doing it. They, okay. they, they attempted the most threes in the NBA. Ho, 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 ho. Okay, you're talking about those two. What about the rest? Kevin Durant is a three, hold on, he's a three-level scorer. Okay? He can score from the post. He can score from the mid-range. He can score from three. Kevin Durant, just like Michael Jordan, he said he don't want to rely on a three. 
Okay? Now, you got to understand, when, even though the three-point line wasn't there, the long-range shooting would still be there. And the lane would literally just be wide open because you still have to guard. Okay? Regardless of whether it's a three-pointer or not, it's a long-range shot. But at the end of the day, you still got to extend the defense and you got to play. And those lanes would be wide open. Wide open. Okay? Absolutely wide open. All the way to the lane. It's over with. They can get tools as well. This is simple. This is not even close. Okay? Now, I don't even know if this team should be up there, to be honest with you. I don't know. I don't even know if this team should be up here. You don't know if the 71 Bucks should be up here? No. Wow. He's, well, just, talking. He's just talking. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> He's just talking. talking. He don't mean that. He don't mean that. He's just talking. No, I don't. I don't. He just, he just talking. To well, me. well, here's the thing. Here's the thing. We, we've reached the end of the time for this particular game. Um, I think Coach Scott made excellent points, but I will say I got to go with Coach J.O. And my thought process, if you're watching, make sure you hit the link. Go vote. Tell us who you think should would win this game. Um, the third seed at 2017 Golden State Warriors or the 14th seed 1971 Milwaukee Bucks. We're going to the next game and the 7th seed 1997 Chicago Bulls versus the 10th seed 1985 Los Angeles Lakers. We started with Coach Scott last time. I'm going to start with you, Coach J.O. Who do you have in this game and why? Why do you think they win? Okay. Uh, we're going, we going with the Lakers here, right? Now, slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down. I, slow I had down. something in my I, eye. Something. No, okay, uh, slow, was, slow down. Piece of dust. Okay. As the long objective person on this panel, because I can be objective, right? <laughs> I'm not, I don't have, I don't have no love affair for LeBron James or Michael Jordan. I'm just going to call it the way it is. And I'm not going to pick the Bulls just because Michael Jordan played on them. I'm not. I'm not going to do that. Not this particular team. Not this team. Okay, not this year. Maybe in some other years, but not this year. Okay? Now, the 1985 Lakers, this is simple, simple, simple. Okay? The the Bulls cannot match up. They can't. You want to talk about speed, right? Everybody, wanna, oh, look at the speed of Michael, Ron Harper, uh, Dennis Rodman, uh, Pippen. Who? Cool, 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 cool. All right. What about the speed of the Lakers? What about the speed of the Lakers? Think about this. When 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 the Bulls beat the Lakers, when the Bulls beat the Lakers in the finals, Kareem wasn't there. Kareem they had wasn't four, there. They had four Hall of Famers, though. It's, it's oh, not oh, like, it doesn't oh. matter because Kareem wasn't there. They had four Hall of Famers. Kareem was not there. This is 1985. Kareem okay. was still all NBA player in 1985. Even though he's older, he's still all NBA player. Okay, fair. Okay? Fair. All NBA player. Trust and believe. Six seven Dennis Rodman does nothing with Kareem. Absolutely nothing. He's null and void. Six seven, he does nothing. Okay? That's a chair. You drive him. He's a drink. chair. He's a chair at that time. Okay. Now, we all know. We all know that Magic Johnson is a matchup problem. I'm not saying that he would just destroy Jordan or Pippen. I'm not saying that at all, okay? But he's a matchup problem. He is a matchup problem, okay? Now, who's going to guard um, uh, Worthy? That's what I'm going to say. Who's going to guard that? That's another matchup problem. You got three players on your team who can go get you 20 points per game. Bulls don't have that. Bulls do not have that. You got one player, one player, one. Don't give me Scotty Pippen. Don't do that. I don't want to hear about Scotty getting you 25, 30 a night because he that he's not that type of player. All right? Scotty never averaged 20 in the playoffs? Again, again. Average. In a playoff series? Average. No, no, no. In a playoff series? Maybe. <laughs> okay? But I'm talking about, oh, I'm talking about over an 82-game stretch. Can Scotty do that? Is he known for that? And it's not like the, the Lakers don't got uh, players to put on Scotty. It's not like that. They got length. They got speed. They got athleticism as well. 
Okay. So All I'm right. going with the Lakers on this. All right. So you're going with the Lakers, Coach Scott. I heard what Coach JL said about Magic being a matchup problem. And I want to take this opportunity for our sponsor, um, Abaya, myself, to use this time to say, I don't think that's true. And the reason I don't think it's true is because of the 91 playoffs. All right. In 91, I know we're talking about 91 and 85, but in 91, we've seen what Jordan did with Magic. There is a myth that has been created that Pippen had to stick Magic um, because Jordan he destroyed Jordan. That is not true. Magic did have 19 in the first quarter. He only scored two. I mean, the first game, he only scored two of those points on Michael. The second game, Jordan picks up two quick fouls. Pippen does a good job on him. Michael's back on Magic in third game three, four, and five, locking Magic down and outscoring him in almost just as many assists. So Michael was dominant in that. I don't know if Magic could be the, the matchup problem for MJ at the time. Um Unless, Coach Scott, you tell me if I'm wrong here. Now, I, I can see it this way. We're looking at 85 Magic versus the year before he retires Michael Jordan. Maybe that way. What's your, what's your, what's your thoughts? 85 Kareem as well. Don't leave that out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I, I had 85 Lakers uh, just, just for the simple fact that, you know, Byron, uh, I'm sorry, Michael Cooper was not and is not a Hall of Famer, but he is one of two players that is an eight-time all-defensive player that is not an all-Hall of Famer. So you, you, I, I look at Drake Cooper's that not a speed. Hall of Famer? No, Michael Cooper is not a Hall of Famer. That's crazy, right? Uh, eight-time eight time defensive all first team and is not a Hall of Famer. Hmm. Uh, you know, the speed of this team, the defensive prowess of this team, the number two in scoring offense, top 10 defense, I think they cause a true problem for the 97 Bulls. I think they cause a real problem. I have to agree with Coach JL on this one. Hmm. Okay. All right. I'm over here looking to see Michael Cooper. I thought Michael Cooper was a Hall of Famer. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Wait. One or two players. Huh. That is an eight-time all-defensive player that did not make the Hall of Fame. Huh. Hmm. Well, listen. Fans, we go deep for you. We go, we go get the <laughs> stats for you now. You say feeling about the onion. Well, listen, <laughs> I will say this. Everything is included, all right? And that includes age as well. So if we're talking about 85 Magic versus Jordan at, 36 and he's about to retire into his second retirement. Maybe, maybe I still think Jordan's a great defender, but I don't think he, I, I'm, I'm not going to lie and be like Jordan was just as good as a defender in 97, 98 as he was in 91. I know that's not true, but he was still a pretty good defender. So maybe looking at that, um, I can see where you get, where you guys coming from. So both you guys were rolling with the 85 Los Angeles Lakers over the 1997 Chicago Bulls. All right. As much as I hate to hate to say, you know, I can see where you're coming from. I see where you're coming from. The next game, we have the number eight seed and the number nine seed being the same team with two different years. Number eight seed is eight, 1989, the Detroit Pistons and the Detroit Pistons of 2004. Coach Scott, which team do you have and why do you have the team winning? And actually, I haven't asked you guys this before. You know what? Matter of fact, I'll ask you at the end. At the end, I'm going to go back and ask you guys, all of your picks, give me the numbers in seven games. Do they win four zip? Do they win four three? Do they win, you know, what? But we'll, get, we'll go back up at the end. But why do you have, which Pistons teams do you have in this game? The 89 Pistons or the 2004 Pistons and why? I got the 89 Pistons, man. This team right here, I grew up watching these guys. These were the original bad boys. The 2004 yeah. stole the blueprint from these guys. I mean, Isaiah Thomas, Joe Dumas, Dennis Rodman, Bill Lambeer. I mean, Adrian Dantley, Mark Aguirre. You can't get better defensive basketball than this. And then when you're talking about who they had to go through to get to the championship, they beat the Showtime Lakers, Kareem. In his mm -hmm. in his youth, they beat Magic in his youth. I mean, you had Isaiah. Well, they weren't the in their like, youth. They were. This is eighty nine. I mean, these guys were seasoned. They were. They were at. The, they were at the prime time years of, of of their of their calling. I mean, they they knew the system. They coached. They they. I mean, everything everything about the Lakers was seasoned for them to be the greatest team of all time and. They had to run up to the bad boys. That's that's really what it was about. 
And then, you know, the bad boys had to run up and kill Mike when, when, when they took it to the but, but, you know, when you look at this team, this team was not balanced. They had defense, and they had offense. They had everything you needed for a team to be great. When you look at Isaiah at 19 points per game, Joe Dumar, 16 points per game, Dennis Rodman, 50% from the field, from the field, but you know, you're looking at 13 rebounds per game. Bill Lambert, 13, 10, and 2. What do you need not to have this team to be the best team against the 2004 Pistons? They have everything to beat these guys. Go jail. Coach Scott says they were they were still primed and ready, and they were good. What say you? Listen, as I pointed out last week, this is no disrespect to the 89 Pistons. No disrespect, right? None. Not to be disrespectful. No, no, no. It's not. It's not. It's not. But again, we got to remember the path of most resistance. For some reason, I'm the only one up on this panel that care about that. I'm the only one that care about that, right? He loves making I guess, stuff up. I guess, I guess who you play don't matter. Who you play doesn't matter. Okay, 89 Pistons, right? We want to talk about them being such a great defensive team, which they were in the regular season. You played and swept a birdless Celtics. No bird. Let me ask you a question, Abai. Let me ask you a question. If any team played a Jordan team and Jordan wasn't there and they swept them, you giving them credit for it? Jordan got hurt. You give them credit for it? Oh, they swept the Bulls. You give you give them credit for? Yes, I give them credit. Know why I give them credit? <laughs> I'm gonna be honest with you. You ask me a question, can I answer it? You know why I would give them credit? I would give them credit because when Jordan retired and when the pit, the Bulls had to play the the Knicks, that was still and even you said this that was still a good team. Of course, they didn't have what they could, could use to get over the hump. They needed Jordan to get over the hump, but that was still Pippen did a great job leading that team. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I need you to. Hold on, hold on. Okay. <laughs> so, hold on for a second. That was a good team. Quick yes or no. And that's all I need is a quick yes or no. Was that a good team? Yes or no? Decent. They were, okay. Decent team. Do you oftentimes see decent teams get swept? Yeah. Often? Well, no. Oh, well, no. I mean, it happens. It, it, it happens, yeah. right? It has happened. But you don't see that oftentimes when they get swept. So that what I'm saying is this is a decent team, according to you and according to me, a good team. And if they got swept, even though Jordan's not there, I still think they should should at least win at least one or two games. So, yes, I will give the team that swept them credit. OK, the difference is the difference is the Bulls already knew that Jordan wasn't there. They came in the training camp without Jordan, like that type of thing. So they, that's they still, were, that's still not, I, still has no bearing on. Yeah, yes, it does. Situation. Yes, it does. You know why? They, they they had time. They had time. They had an entire season to play without Jordan, entire training camp to play without Jordan. They were mentally prepared to be without Jordan. But but Bird but, played six but, but games. Coach, Bird played six games that season. But coach, that's their best player. Coach, I, I'm with you on this. I'm not I'm not against you on this. I'm actually with you. I think they did not uh maybe the 2004 uh Pistons win. But what I'm saying, just based on your question, you asked me if the Bulls got swept and Jordan wasn't there, would I give the other team credit? Yes, because that's still a pretty good team. You still should at least squeeze out one or two wins. That's all I'm saying. Your okay, Bulls are okay, still a good okay. team. Okay, okay, okay. Let me continue. Do you give them credit, the 89, the, the 89 Pistons for being a uh a Chicago Bulls team, an 89 Chicago Bulls team? Do I give them credit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay, I do too. I do. I do. I do. All right. What about a team, a Lakers team with Kareem literally, like literally on his last leg? Literally. Like a team. No, 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 no. Slow down. Slow down. 10 point per game, Kareem. Weren't you and also Coach Scott, the same two people who said, if you own the court or if you own the field, then we come in full force. If Kareem was there, then we come in full force. Right, but was Kareem, he was on the court. Was he Kareem? Was he Kareem? I get again. I'm gonna let you talk. Hold on, I'm gonna let you talk to Coach Scott because I I agree with you. We just ain't on, we ain't on the same page as the method of how they got there, whatever case may be. But I agree with you. 2004, maybe 89. But if 
no Kareem wasn't the same Kareem, but you know, it was still a good team. It was a good. Okay. You got to coach Scott. Hold on. Your thoughts. They swept everybody except the Bulls, except the Michael Jordan led Bulls. Because they Michael swept, Jordan was there. They Michael. swept everybody. <laughs> what are you talking about? They did they not sweep Bird, Bird everybody. Wasn't there. Bird wasn't there. Like Bird, like how do you get credit for that? Listen, like how? Man. Listen, man. How? Listen. I'm, now I'm tired of it. Now, now I'm tired. I'm tired. Listen, man. Listen. You have not given one fact about oh, the no, 2004 so I, I Pistons. No, no, they I wasn't would have got though. Molly dragged. What are I you wasn't talking finished. about, brother? I Listen. wasn't finished. I wasn't finished. Abaya, I got a question for you and Coach Scott, right? And I hate, and I hate the run. No bag. more questions. Get to the t- no, two no, I'm about to Yeah. I'm about to. Hey, listen. I don't. I, I give the belts. I'm not fighting for it. Talk to Coach Scott. All right, slow down. <laughs> I, 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 I just want to ask. And I hate the the circle around the LeBron James train, but oh, we got to do it. Not right? that. You all tell me it doesn't mean nothing that Larry Bird wasn't there, but. We but we make excuses for LeBron in 2015 when y'all tell me, oh, he wasn't supposed to beat the Warriors. Kyrie wasn't there. Kyrie got hurt. Kevin Love got hurt. I wait, for, wait, 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 wait. Hold on, so hold on, how, hold on. How, so how was you're, LeBron supposed to win? You're how making was the Cavs supposed you're, to win. You're giving, I guess, I can't speak for Coach Scott, but you're giving me somebody else's argument. I've never said that. One and two that? and two. I, 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 hold, I, on, I, hold, I, on, I hold on, hold on, hold on. I, two, two. I never said that it doesn't matter that Bird wasn't there. And they was. I'm just simply saying it was still a good team. So I mean, I get it. Bird wasn't there, but they still should be a good team. Did they have Hall of Famers without Bird? Was the Cavs a good team without Kyrie and Kevin? You can't answer my question with a question. Did they have Hall of Famers without Bird? When Bird wasn't there, was Hall of Famers yes. on that Boston team? <laughs> and you're telling me Hall of Famers can't squeeze out one win? Maybe two. You mean to tell me the GOAT can't get by a, a team that just got put out in the first <laughs> round the year not, before? Uh, your uh, argument's uh, not uh, adding uh, up, Coach. Uh, I'm uh, telling uh, you, uh, I'm with you on this one. But all uh, I'm saying is you're 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 diminishing what the 89 Pistons did. You're trying to diminish uh, it. And I understand. I still think the 2004 Pistons may win that game. I'm with you on that. No, but I'm not going to diminish what I, the 89 Pistons did. Yet, and why? I haven't even got to them yet. And that's the point. No, you on. can't I'm even not, get to them because they I'm won't not. beat the 89 Coach, Pistons. Can I get to them, Scope? Can I get to them? Can I get to them? Brother, you've had 10 minutes to get to them. Yeah. No, yeah. I had 10 minutes. No, I had 10 minutes to tell you why the Pistons were overrated. All right, so they let's do this. Let's, let's get to two. it. Why the do playoffs. they? Why do they win? And then we're gonna let Coach okay. Scott uh, give his let breakdown on why question. the Pistons eighty nine are the best team. Eighty four points per game. If I told you that a team held other teams to eighty four points per game, what would you say? I mean, got that's a great team. No, 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 no. They're not just a great team. That's all time great. Okay. Okay. That's all time great. So when you telling me about what the Pistons would do, what does that mean when you're playing against a team that held teams to 84 points per game? That's almost unheard of. Okay. Chauncey Billups, Rip Hamilton, Tayshawn Prince. Rasheed Wallace, Ben Wallace, when we talk about chemistry, when we talk about puzzle pieces, that's perfect, okay? And we're going to go back to path of most resistance, okay? Let me ask you a question, both of you. Who was the most dominant duo, not only ever, but definitely during the 2000s? Can I get, a, can I get an answer? Who during was the, the most 2000s? dominant duo? Go ahead, Coach Scott. Do, do. Do, 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 I'm do not it. asking none of this man questions. He has not gotten to the point. I'm about, about to. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying. Two. I'm not aiding you in no point, brother. Okay. <laughs> All right. I answer it for you. Kobe and Shaq. Okay. Kobe and Shaq. You know, the so-called team with Gary Payne, Carl Malone there as well. Hey, people want to say Gary was old, Carl Malone was old. Who? I get that point. At the end of the day, you had Kobe, you had Shaq. They dismantled 
dismantled. They literally broke the dynasty apart. The Pistons did that. They broke that up. They are the reason that Shaq and Kobe didn't exist anymore. They embarrassed the Lakers. 4-1. <laughs> all right. All right, Coach Scott. I'll, I mean, Coach Dale. Like it. All right, Coach Scott. Now, I hear what Coach Dale is saying. But also, I think, too, we have to look at the time and the league average at that time. Yes, 84 okay. points is, is, is good. It's, it's great. But if the league is averaging 120 points per game and they help, them to 80, help their opponents 84, awesome. But if the league is averaging 100, maybe. I mean, it's still great. But context, as you like to say, Coach Dale, Coach Scott, why does the 2004 Pistons beat the 1989 Pistons? They don't beat the <laughs> the 89 Pistons because as – Coach J.O. so eloquently talked about the defense. You're talking about a number one defense. You're talking about in the 89, the number two defense who held every team, even the Showtime Lakers, even the Michael Jordan Bulls to 93 points per game. So they don't beat them, period. Mm. Okay. Let me ask you, let me ask you this question. Uh, and there's no more questions. Yes, it is. There's yes, no more is. questions. All right. Hold, 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 hold. Out of the... The 89 Celtics without Bird, out of those uh, 89 Lakers with a 10 point per game Kareem, out of those 89 Bulls with just uh, Michael Jordan and a baby Scottie Pippen, and you got the 2004 Lakers with Kobe, with Shaq. What team is the best? I'm just asking, out of those teams I just named, what team is the best? You want me to answer that for you? Clearly, Shaq and Kobe Lakers were the best team. Out of those I just named. Clearly. And the 04 Pistons dismantled them. Okay, we're talking about prime Kobe. We're talking about tail end prime Shaq. But still in this prime, all NBA Kobe, all NBA Shaq. And they dismantled them. They broke them apart. Coach J.O., can I ask you a question? Go ahead. Did Shaq Play for the Lakers in 2005? No. He was gone, right? Correct. That's why they lost. The team chemistry was gone. That's why. The Pistons in 2004 were a better team than the Lakers. That's why they dismantled them. That is why the Lakers did not beat them. I don't I don't know one person in 2004 that would have picked the Pistons over the Lakers. Not one. I don't know. I mean, yeah. Well, you know, the Lakers were carrying that, that you know, that mantle. So I probably wouldn't have done so either. I was actually surprised at the outcome of the series. But I got to say, what Coach Scott said was it, it, it had it's some validity to it. Hold some weight. There was some friction there, which can cause you to lose games. But we're going to move on to the next game. If you're watching, make sure you hit the link in the description section or the link pin in the comment section. Go over and vote. The, the bracket is there and you're going to be able to see the percentage of votes uh, that each team is receiving. And it's the coach's job to convince you guys who to vote for, what team and whoever, whichever coach can get you guys to vote for the most teams in their favor. They're the ones who are going to ho hoist the championship belt and be the GOAT debate champion. Let's go to the next game. All right. The 2001 Lakers versus the 1986 Boston Celtics. Coach Scott, who wins this game? 2001 Lakers, no doubt. Why? Too much too much, too much firepower. Kobe Bryant, Shaquille O'Neal, Brian Shaw, Isaiah Ryder, Horace Grant. It's, 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 too much, it's too much wisdom. It's too much firepower. And it's just too much dominance on the court. They're 56 and 26. I mean – that team, that team, it was no friction with those guys back then. It was, it was, it was, it was show, it was the Showtime Lakers all over again back in 2001. So this team, no doubt in my mind, they dismantled the 1986 Boston Celtics. Coach Hill? No, no, you got to slow your roll, Coach. And don't get me wrong. I'm picking you. I'm picking the 01 Lakers, right? But again, I think the the bracket is unfair. All right, these eight, hold on, slow down, slow down. I'm going to pick the 01 Lakers. And like you said, this was a dominant, dominant team. 15 to 1 playoff record. All right, uh, number two offensive rating, number three scoring team that year. Okay, top 10 defensive rating, yeah. 94 points per game. Okay, they were holding teams to. Again, the path of most resistance. These things matter. They played. 
a 50-win Portland team. 50-win Portland team in the first round. How many times do teams play other 50-win teams in the first round? Okay? A 55-win Kings team, a 58-win Spurs team, and they gentlemen swept a 56-win 76ers uh, team. Okay? That's the path of most resistance. What, you, what we cannot do is crap on the 86 Boston Celtics. And I'm going to give them some love. Even though I'm rolling with the Lakers, I got to give this team some love. Okay? Mm-hmm. You're talking about Bird, Mikhail, all these Hall of Famers that you say they uh, got a bio. Uh, Robert Parrish, Dennis Johnson. Okay? Number one defensive rating team. Number three uh, scoring defense team. Number two offensive rating team. Number one uh, rebounding team. And number two in the six. Hmm. Uh, okay? That team was legit. Okay? Yeah. And if they were and if they were matched up with those 89 Pistons, they would have swept them. This team that you call so good, they would have swept them out. The, hey, they would have swept them. Okay? Hey, listen. But they didn't have the luxury in this bracket to be matched up with that team. Cool. They got to be matched up with one of the greatest teams ever as well. It's fine. It's fine. Listen, it's like. if you're the best, you're the best no matter what your numbers say. You're the best, you're the best no matter who you play. I got to go with – um. I'm a, I'm a lean. I'm not going to go fully with Coach Scott on this, but I'm going to lean towards what he said. I don't know if they fully dismantle them, but as we do know, and time does you know pass, we do see more athleticism. We do see the game change. We see the game evolve. And the 2001 Lakers, I think, would dominate mostly oh uh, that Boston team, the 86 Boston team, primarily a Kobe, a Kobe Bryant. You know who who who. I mean, listen, I think Larry Bird should be and will be in the GOAT debate when we have the GOAT debates on here because he's one of the greatest of all time. But I don't think Larry Bird would be any match for Kobe. He's not going to stop. I don't know who on that team would be able to stop Kobe. And then you have another who would just uh, pair up with Shaq. I, I just maybe we can find some good matches everywhere else. But them two right there, I just don't know. But again, um, so. You, not in you guys, yeah, you guys both chose the listen, 0-1 listen, Lakers. I'm rolling, I'm rolling with the Lakers as well. I'm just telling you this is unfair because this 86 Boston Celtic team would probably be a Final Four team. Would probably be it doesn't a matter. Final it doesn't matter. Four it doesn't matter team. if they're a Final Four team. It's not about being a Final Four team. It's about winning. I think if you're the best team, you're going to win regardless. So when you get to the Final Four and then you face the same team in the Final Four, then what happens? You can't be pleased. As being one of the great, as being the greatest team, just because I made the final four, you got to win the championship, and that's what you coach. That's what you teach all your players, right, coach? Right. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Unlike, hold on, unlike that Pistons <laughs> team. Okay, I, listen. What you gonna tell me when I tell you they beat the Bulls, the '86 Bulls team, or they swept the Bulls team? What you gonna tell me? The Bulls was nothing. That's what y'all gonna tell me. Wait, what? They swept a Bulls team three zero in the first round. Yeah, they 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 did. They, they did. <laughs> what, what's, but hold on, hold on. What, what's the what, point? What's the response behind that? What are you going to tell me? They were the better team, and they swept the Bulls. I mean, they was swept Michael them. Jordan on that team, huh? Was yes. Michael Jordan? Yeah, Michael, Michael Jordan. Jordan. See, here's the thing about that team. Mike was on that team, and Mike was primarily the team. Mike was an individually good player. But they didn't have an overall team, not one that was going to match up against that Celtics team. Did the Celtics beat them and beat them convincingly? Yes. I mean, I'm a Bulls fan, but I can't, I can't, you know, lie. They got beat. But listen, we got to move on to the next round, the next game, uh, before we run out of time. The next game we have is the 1991 Chicago Bulls, the same team that beat the Lakers 4-1, Magic and Lakers 4-1 uh, in the series, which was could have been a sweep there, actually. Um, against the 2008 Boston Celtics, the 91 Bulls versus the 2008 Boston Celtics, Coach J.O., who wins this game? Okay, as I always say, and I'm going to stand on this, and I will never, ever, ever move off this square. Defense and rebounding wins championships. Okay. Number one defensive rating team, number two scoring defense, number two rebounding team, number two in assists. Point blank period. OK. 
Okay. But John Rondo, Ray Allen, Paul Pierce, Kendrick Perkins, Kevin Garnett, James Posey, okay, Leon Poe, Tony Allen, those guys, if not top uh, two or three, they definitely would be arguably the number one defensive team ever. They can be in that category with the 04 Pistons, with the uh, 89 Pistons. They would be in that category. They were stacked, okay? I give they you were that. stacked yeah. defensively. They were. Give me okay? That. Kevin Garnett, you're talking about defensive player of the year. All right? Paul Pierce, finals MVP. People will say, well, who's going to match up with Jordan? Cool, cool. I got Tony Allen. I got Ray Allen. I got Paul Pierce. I got Kevin Garnett. You can look like that all you want to about it. You can look like that. Cool. I got James Posey. So I'm going to ask you this question. I just, I just who's gonna, hold on, slow down, slow down, slow down. I'm just looking, who, man. Who, I'm gonna ask you, I'm gonna ask you this question. Who's gonna match up with Rajon Rondo? Run Harp. Uh wait, we're talking about 91 Bulls. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We talking about 91. You got a good point with that one. But what I was looking at is this. When you said who was gonna stop or lock up or match up with Jordan, then you name one of the players, your name was Ray Allen, is one of the players he actually toasted and roasted, and he Talks about it all the time. I don't think Tony Allen is keeping on, up with Michael fine. Jordan. We're talking about we talking about bodies that you can legit throw at them. Okay, you're talking about okay. I all right, I can, I, 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 I can understand the point. I can understand okay. the point. Okay, now let me ask you this question, right? And you might say because you brought it out the other day when Michael Jordan had to guard a Reggie Miller. Let me ask you this: Was that easy for Michael Jordan to guard a Reggie Miller though? Even though he did a good job. Down the stretch on Reggie Miller. I think is it's a loaded question, ma- man. That's nothing's nothing's in the NBA is easy. I, I don't care okay, who no, you no. are. So I'm saying, you know, right. That, that's not an easy matchup, right? No, Reggie no matchup's easy matchup. really easy. No it, matchup's not, easy. But my whole my whole point is this: you're running around with Ray Allen the same way you had to run around with Reggie Miller, the same way that you would have to possibly run around the court with Steph. That right there will play a factor in Michael Jordan and what he does on the offensive end. You got to run around with, with Ray Allen, and you got to go tell me you finna score 30 on KG, on Paul Pierce, uh, 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 James Posey, Tony Allen. That's going to be difficult, now. Yeah, I don't know. I, I think, Coach, I think uh, it's already been proven because I think Reggie Miller was that type of player to run like Ray Allen. He Actually, he was that player to run like Ray Allen. But right. Coach Scott, you, hold on. Let me get Coach Scott in here. Um, Coach Scott, who do you have? The 91 Bulls or the 2008 Celtics? I got the 2008 Celtics, but not for the reasons. Of, I mean, some similar reasons, but co- co- Coach is he killing, he killing my argument over here. You know, <laughs> he, killing, he killing us over here. Uh, you know, that team was just dirty and gritty. I mean, the defensive paralysis of that team was, 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 it was it, I mean, it was stellar. Um, and then, I, the matchups weren't just the the ninety one Bulls just did not match up well. Ninety six no. matched up better. No. Ninety one no. Bulls didn't match up well. Sam Cassell coming off the bench, it, they just didn't match up well. Sam so, Cassell off the bench, he, they, he that that posed a problem. In ninety one, yeah. Who who's coming off the Bulls bench? John Paxton. <laughs> yeah. Like, what are that's you a, telling me, man? That's a, that's a that's a hold big on hold on hold on hold on hold on hold on hold on. John Paxton coming off the bench for the Bulls. No, I'm asking. No, no, I'm saying who who would be coming off the bench. That's what I'm saying. I'm asking. I mean, the thing is to say Sam Cassell, he dropped that name in '91. Like that was going to be like the game changer. That's what I'm questioning. But my no, point I, is, I'm the matchups, saying matchups. We're talking I'm, about I'm, matchups. I'm just talking about matchups. Sam Cassell coming off the bench is a that's a matchup issue. Eh, that's all I'm saying. Eh, it's yet to be seen. So both of you guys got. Uh, 2008 uh, I mean, 2008 Celtics. Celtics. All right. It's, all right. it's all too right. deep of a team. It's too deep. It's, it's just too deep. I, yeah. It's too deep. They're too balanced. I got you, Coach. I got you, Coach. Kevin I got you. You're telling me Horace Grant? I got you. Grant, I got you. And, and don't get Pump me wrong. Pump your I'm brakes. Horace Grant. <laughs> I got you. We finna move to the next round. <laughs> you got <Okay>. it. <laughs> 2008 Celtics. It's yet to be yeah. seen, which means it'll never be seen. But I hear what you guys said. Last game on the first round bracket, 2016, the number two seed, 2016 Golden State Warriors versus the number 15 seed, 
1972 Lakers. Coach J.O., who do you have on this one? Again, right? I know we love to paint this narrative of LeBron James beat the, the best team ever. He came back from 3-1 against the best team ever. Okay, cool. You want to paint that narrative all you want to. Okay. That team lost nine games in the regular season. They lost nine games in the playoffs, right? How are you the best team ever? How are you the best team ever? You Great can't point. be. You can't be, right? And you did not win the championship, right? And you are down 3-1. You're down 3-1 in the Western Conference Finals. You're supposed to be the greatest team ever. And you lost a 3-1 lead in the finals. True enough, a lot happened Ooh, in the finals. A lot of details happened that we don't have to get into. It is what it is. You got to win one game. You got to win one game. So there's no way I'm putting a team in a bracket with the greatest teams ever. You don't deserve it. You do not deserve it. You do not deserve to go to the second round because you did not get the job done. Not only that, we're not going to sneeze on this Lakers team. Okay? Wilt and West. Okay? That's a match up problem. Yeah, man. Okay? We're talking about Will. We're talking about Jerry West, the real bucket getter. Okay? You talking about Jerry West, we getting buckets with no three-point line and a hard rim. Okay? <laughs> now, that duo there, you're not you're not doing that. That this Warriors team right here wasn't the Warriors team with KD. It just wasn't no. the same. True or no? People might say where well, they had good chemistry during the regular season. Yada, 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 yada. It is what it is. But this team, no, you're not. They were the number one scoring offense, number one in offensive rating, number one in assists, number one in rebounds, number two in defensive rating. Okay? They were legit. Yep. Legit. Yeah. Okay? No, I, I, I can't disagree with that. Um, To be down 3-1 and to lose a 3-1 lead, in the same playoff year, Coach Scott, that's major. Who you got? 2000, the number two seed, 2016 Golden State Warriors, or the 15 seeded 1975 Los Angeles Lakers. 1972 Los Angeles Lakers. 72 Lakers for sure. Uh, honorable mention to El- Elgin Baylor. Uh, you know, it, it, it's 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 just too much. It's too much depth and it's too much length on that on that squad right here. Uh, they are not the same team without KD. I agree with Coach J on that and. Without without KD, they can't do the same things, and this team couldn't finish. Golden State, yeah. you lost the lead. You couldn't win the ship. No cigar. All right. You don't well, hey, listen, that's a tight bracket. That's the first round. Again, if you're viewing this, go to the link in the description section. Go to the link and um, the, the pinned comment section and go to the bracket. And you're going to see the bracket with all the teams, the first seed all the way down to the number 16 seed. Vote. And whoever you vote for, whoever you vote for, you know, it's going to be dependent on who is the champion come next week of the GOAT debate and who's going to be able to hoist the belt. Right now, Coach Scott has the belt. Coach J.O. been saying he's trying to get it back. And he can't, he can't really, he can't, he can't, he can't put his hands on it. Actually, he hasn't been a champion yet. And I know he's striving. Coach Scott, where's that belt? Where's that belt, Coach Scott? I'm bringing it up, baby. This thing's so heavy. It's so heavy. Coach J.O., maybe one day you'll get to pick it up. It's so heavy. It's so heavy, baby. <laughs> the GOAT debate champion. So, listen, Coach J.O., so he's heavy. there, and he, he's trying to get it. So, listen, we are going to get out of here. Make sure you guys subscribe to The GOAT Debate and follow us, okay? Make sure you follow us on all social media. We're on Instagram. Make sure you follow us on Instagram. The links are down in the description section as well. Uh, Twitter. What else we got? Facebook, TikTok. Make sure you guys are there. Next week, Monday, upload at 12 noon, and we will be back again doing another GOAT debate for the second round of Everybody Who Advanced, and you guys help us out. With that being said, we'll see you guys next time. Welcome to The Goat Debate, the premier online sports debate show where engaging discussions and thrilling debates unfold as we determine who is the greatest of all time in every sport. I am your host, Abaya Israel, joined by my two co-hosts, Coach Scott and Coach J.O. 
tune into our YouTube and Facebook channels to catch our reactions and coverage of the biggest games and the latest news. Don't miss out on your chance to participate in the action. Join us every Tuesday night at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for a The Goat Debate, where you, the viewer, can call in and share your thoughts on who deserves the title of the GOAT. Be sure to mark your calendars. Every Monday, we upload 12 noon Eastern Standard Time, and we go live every Tuesday night at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Be sure to subscribe, call in, and participate. Come and be a part of the conversation.